Hey guys, welcome to TA Outdoors. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, intro. And you've just caught me in the evening time with some fresh mackerel. Now, eating this might be difficult, but nothing a couple of logs can't sort out. Sorry for the planes above. So what I've done is I've got, this is fresh mackerel that dad caught uh, yesterday, I believe, or day before yesterday. And look at that, man. Oh, this is to die for, guys. Absolutely to die for. Is the camera gonna focus? Yes. What I've put in this mackerel is obviously oil in the pan I kept in that little test tube. Um, then I squeezed a load of lemon over it to get some lemon juices going. And I also seasoned it with some Italian seasoning, so it's prime. And I actually really like the, don't know about you guys, I really like the skin on mackerel. Really salty taste in the skin. Just using my little open L number eight as my kind of fish food knife. I always use this one as my food knife and keep it separate from my main bushcraft knife. But this is incredible, guys. Fire's still going. The lanterns are still burning, the old cramp ball lanterns. I'll go through everything I've done at camp in a bit. But <laughs> meanwhile, I've just got to enjoy this fresh mackerel. It is unbelievable. Thanks, Dad, for catching it. I appreciate it. Sorry about the planes, guys. There's a light air airfield um, not too far from here. I'm also going to tell you guys about all the bugs that are about. That I'm trying to prevent myself from <laughs> getting bitten. Um, there's plenty of bugs over here. It's, it really is packed full of bugs and insects and all sorts, mosquitoes. But I'll tell you all about those in a bit. I just thought I'd eat my food, really, and enjoy it. And then um, explain why I've done the setup that I have and you know, why I'm out here making a film for you guys when I'm getting eaten alive by bugs. Look at that mackerel boy. Fresh fish, you cannot beat it. Mmm. Look at that. Look at that. Is that making you jealous, guys? Look at the juices. Cooked in all the juices. This one's cooked whole. So you get a lot more of the juices and the flavour in the mackerel rather than when you fillet it. Obviously you lose all those um, juices. But it's been gutted at least and cleaned. Um, but so it's not deboned, there is bones in there, I have to be careful of that. But way more flavour, way more taste. And this is just what I'm resting the flying frying pan on. Just two, two sticks like that. Yes, you could argue, don't use forks and knives scraping your frying pan, but I'm not actually scraping the frying pan, I'm just picking up the bits of, bits of fish here which is lovely. I know the old frying pan police will be out. You can't use that on a frying pan, you'll ruin it. I don't really care. Okay, so I'm crouched next to a giant ant's nest. This is actually an average sized ant nest of the southern wood ant, which is, the Latin name is Formica rufa. Those of you who know chemistry will understand the word formic in that part. And that's because these little fellas can spray formic acid. This wasn't known until about 1670, I think, when a guy called John Ray, uh, who studied nature, he actually collected a load of these and he crushed them up and he actually distilled the formic acid that they produce. Now they are aggressive ants and they will bite. And actually right now they're crawling all over me because I'm near their nest and they can feel that vibration and I've disturbed them. Typically their nests are made out of dead pine needles and you can see that from the amount of pine needles on here, but they usually build them over rotten stumps and things like that. In each colony, there can be up to, well, between 100,000 to 400,000 ants. So there's easily over 100,000 here. They can spread out hundreds of meters, I think over 100 meters. They're, they're at my camp where I usually do my bushcraft camp. They're near there, they're everywhere. But what's interesting, and you'll be seeing this footage now, is um, as I go to approach my hand on the nest like this, and hopefully you'll see it in slow-mo, you actually see the ants rear up backwards and point their abdomen towards me and spray the formic acid. And as I've slowed the footage down, you should be able to see that. I'm hoping you guys can see that. And that's basically their defense mechanism for any mammals such as foxes, badgers, and things like that, that come near and try to, you know, disturb their nest, then that's their defense mechanism is to spray formic acid at them. Now in small doses, that doesn't really harm me. Uh, it didn't harm my hand at all. What it did have was a really potent smell. And it's actually quite off-putting. And I'm sure to a mammal, who has a really sensitive smell sensors on their muzzle or their snout, 
that must be horrific, it must be horrendous, because even me just smelling it on my hands, it really did stink. Even if I go to rest my hand on now, you'll see them crawl over my hand like this. They're not biting me, but they're everywhere. This here is an orb weave spider, a female one. Uh, there's actually over 3,000 types or species of orb weave spider. As you can see, she's facing down in her web. She's weaved her web. They usually um, weave them each day, actually. They can weave a new web each day, and they eat up their... Some of the species eat up their own web in the evening time and then weave them up again in the mornings. It's very clever and they can put them up almost in a matter of minutes. Super efficient. Apologies, she's blowing about a bit in the wind. Uh, but she's woven her web and she's just sitting there now waiting for any small flies or insects to hit against her web. And any small vibration she'll feel, as you can see, all of her legs are in contact with different parts of the web. So wherever something hits any insect, she'll know exactly which direction it came from, depending on which vibration hits which leg. Very clever. Spiders are pretty awesome. There's so many different species of orb weave spider, but in this woodland, they're really prevalent. There's loads of them. And thankfully the wind's just settling down so you can get a better look. You can see that mottled brown on the, uh, on the spider's back there. But when you see them weaving their web, it is really is something to see. It's really amazing. And best to see, really, after some dew. So early mornings, late evenings, when, the, uh, when there's dew around, you can see the moisture on the web, and it just reflects off the web a lot more. Here's another orb weave spider. Again, sitting head down. You'll notice this with the orb weaves. They do sit with their head down. But you can see on their... I don't know if you can see there on their legs the mottled sort of white and black on the back of their legs. It's very hard to see because it's windy. I uh, wish I could get better wish I could get better footage for you guys, but this one spun its web as well. Just waiting for its prey in the day. This breeze will just blow any small flies into the web and their webs can span across huge distances. I just walked past one that was about fifteen feet between the trees. Incredible stuff. So for all of you wondering, do these bite? They will if you provoke them. If I try to pick it up and move it around and affect its web, no doubt it would probably try and bite me out of uh, defence, so best to just leave them be. There's another one. You probably can't see it. Just up there somewhere. You can't really see. There he is. See him? There. Another one just there. The annoying thing is, is they do tend to make their webs about head height, so if you're not looking, you will walk into them. But, they're incredible. And they tend to be prevalent right about now, sort of um, mid to late August, beginning of September. They start to get real big too, the females. Then you can really spot them. Today is our lucky day. We have an orb weave spider actually weaving its web. David Attenborough up in here. I'm trying to focus because the wind is blowing it loads, but let's get let's get a little bit closer without damaging its web. There we go. Look at it, the way it weaves its web is unbelievable. If you watch spiders, honestly they're fascinating guys. They really are. So many people are scared of them, but just watch them and how they work. It is incredible. Sorry that the footage isn't amazing. Doing my best trying to manual focus here. Whoop, nearly blew into the lens. The common woodlouse. Most of you will probably know this species. Very neat, they look like an armadillo, they've got quite hard plating on their backs. There we go, oh, that one fell off. And generally under, under wood that's been around for a while, or rotting wood. And there are actually spiders in this woodland that are specifically designed to break the shells of the woodlouse. They have very strong pincers. Can't remember what they're called. I might pop a link on your screen soon. 
If I can, I'm just trying to keep that wood last there. He's trying to get back to the log. Sorry, buddy. I just want to film you for a bit. Just allow me for a minute. Spider on my shoe, look. Bugs everywhere, boys. Literally bugs everywhere. Harmless ones, really, these ones. He's going rapid. He's saying, Bolt, look at him go. As you can see, there's loads of bugs in this woodland, guys. Loads of bugs. Tell you what, that food was awesome. Fires, I've let it go out now, I don't really need it at all. It's a lovely evening, it's really peaceful. The old uh, crample sticks, or whatever we want to call them, the uh, mosquito repellents, they are still burning away actually, but you, you can't really see them in the frame at the moment. Time for a summer beer, I think, it's so warm tonight. Go on for your standard Cor oh, Corona Extra, this one, but I do quite like my Coronas, um, my lagers in the I do quite like my lagers in the summertime when it's really hot. Oh, better get that. Don't leave any rubbish. It might seem really light to you guys, but it's actually very dark at the moment. I sort of almost maxed my camera ISO setting right up, and it's actually doing. It's really good low light because it's, it's way darker than it looks to me. But to you guys, it looks really light, so that's handy anyway. Cheers, guys. Wherever you're watching, whatever country you're watching, I really appreciate your views and your comments and your likes if you're giving them, and do subscribe. I think as I'm doing this overnight and now, I'm just about to, the channel TA Outdoors is just about to pass 100,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So yeah, if you're, if you're watching, it's, I'm getting loads and loads of views, um, but you know, hit that subscribe button if you're one of those people that are watching and maybe not subscribed. If you hit the subscribe button, you'll at least get some notifications. Uh, remember to tick the bell, the little bell icon. And you can get some notifications of whenever I upload a video, which at the moment is um, pretty regularly. So, yeah, no need for a review of this one. I've had many before. Drink responsibly, always. Oh, that's good. Less of the bird noise now. More of the uh, owls. I've had a few owls. Oh, there's a bird. I've had a few owls. Haven't seen any deer yet. Peaceful, stuffy. I've just set up my sleeping bag and a roll mat that I brought with me. Just keeping it real simple, real lightweight because it's summer, it's peak summer time. Bugs are about. Haven't got my neck buff um, on me at the moment. It's in the bag because they're not as bad at the moment where I've had the fire, but I'll have to probably sleep in that tonight. The old neck buff just to keep the bugs off really. Uh, but at the moment, touch wood, the old crampbles are working, simmering away and uh, smoking away, should I say, and keeping the bugs away. So that's that's a positive sign anyway. Oh, I just love being in the woods, man. Love it. Whoa, camera's having a moment. It's struggling now with the low light. So yeah, the old swamp bed, or whatever you guys want to call it, super raised bed, it's... it's, it's took me most of the day to set up but finally it's set up um, it's more the sawing that takes a long time just making the actual uh, platform for the bed that that makes the that takes a long time and the other thing was the cordage took me absolutely ages to do tree root cordage or just general natural cordage takes so long to do and you'll only really understand that if you guys have done it yourself so do go out there and try it um, just so you can experience and appreciate really how long it takes to to bloom and mate hmm Pretty pleased with that setup. Pretty pleased. Full belly, beer, what more could you want? Wildlife, nature, this is life. This is living, people, this is living. Thank you for watching TA Outdoors. Whoa, a blurred. Yes, we are in focus, <laughs> sorry guys. Uh, yes, it's pretty dark now. Gone 10, about 10, 10, 15. 
So I'm going to call it a night. I want to save my camera battery and camera chips, etc. to film some stuff tomorrow morning for you guys. I'm going to hit the sheets, guys. It is, it is dark. And I don't want to waste my battery. So if you're still with me, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys in the morning, hopefully, bright and early. Night, guys. Morning, guys. Um, slept okay, to be honest. I woke up early, packed up a bit of gear, and I actually went for a bit of a stroll. And I found some world edibles, which I'm going to hopefully add to my breakfast this morning. I've just got the fire going again. Just trying to build it up, ready for some bannock. I brought a homemade bannock mix with me. Bannock bread. And it's a lovely, it's probably about nine o'clock now, so the sun's up well up in the air. It's bright daylight. It's lovely. So I'm getting the fire going, keeping it going. And let me show you my bannock mix. So this is my bannock bread mix in here. It's just, um, I put powdered milk in there flour, plain flour, some salt and some sugar. I'm going to add water to that in a minute. But luckily earlier, because we're peak summertime at the moment, I actually found some blackberries and I put them in this Ziploc bag. I've never had blackberries, fresh blackberries, or wild blackberries. I've never had them in bannock before, so I'm guessing it's going to make the bannock go a completely weird colour, but at the same time give it a nice fruity flavour. So I'm always one for experimenting with food. Let's give it a go. That is what they look like. They're lovely mm. and sweet. Some of these aren't very ripe, but it doesn't matter, they're going in the bannock anyway. But yeah, put a few of those in there. And I've got some fresh ones to eat while the bannock's cooking. Get those, get those vitamins, especially that vitamin C. I'm gonna try and crush those up and burst them, really. Because they're going to get messed up anyway, and it just gives the bread a bit more consistency. Mix them in. Do you know what? I might even put them all in there, guys. Let's chuck them all in. Go on, son. Get them in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm just letting a bit of air out of it so I can... Let's get some water in there. Not too much, little and often. Very easy to overdo it. I haven't got enough flour to to put back in afterwards, so I really don't want to overdo it. Better to underdo it and have it too powdery to begin with. Cleaning up a stick to wrap the bannock around. Going to do it over the stick, bushcraft style. The consistency of the bannock isn't very good, so it'll be interesting to see if it actually takes hold on the stick. We will see, we'll find out. It's all part of the learning experience in the outdoors, guys. I'm not a professional, I don't claim to be an expert. And if anything, I'm an amateur. But that's okay. I don't mind being an amateur. As I'm learning. Just cleaned it up like that. And what I'm going to do is just notch it with some almost like uh, feather sticking because what I'll do is just help pinch that bannock on when I wrap it around. I'll just wrap it around these feathers and it just pinches the bread on and stops it falling off. Just little notches really, little curls. Keep the bannock stuck to it. It's not a good consistency, I'm telling you now, boys. <sighs> this is always so darn messy, this bit. Because it's not it's not congealed right. But beggars cannot be choosers, so we have to go ahead. I've put too much water in. Not enough flour. As you can see. <laughs> it's just a gunky mess. But it was still smoking the face. Still wrap around here. Just by twisting it. Look at those blackberries. They're gonna cook, man, they're gonna fry. 
Yeah, so it's not amazing consistency, but like I say, those um, feather stick bits around the stick, let's burst them. Just help to, um, if your bannock's not the right consistency, stick's a really good way to go, actually. This kind of goes against the bug for bugs in the forest because <laughs> they are going to come to this. Let's get some more out. This one's going to give me this. Keep you alive, though. Yeah. Come on, camera, focus on that, surely. Like I say, still goes around the old stick. Just keep twisting. Note to self, bring more flour next time. While my purple bannock bread is cooking, yeah, they do it slowly, the key to bannock is doing it slowly, uh, I'm going to get a coffee on. Whilst I was <clears throat> foraging earlier, I also found some damson plums, a damson tree, uh, which is pretty cool. And these aren't, I put them in a Ziploc bag again, but these aren't completely ripe yet, I would say. They usually need to go a little bit more purple, a bit like that. Thank you, camera. But, more vitamin C, guys. Mmm, and they do have a seed in them in the middle, like that. Just be aware when you're eating dams and plums. However, all oh, these ones are good. Mmm, that's what they look like inside. Obviously they're a little bit more bitter when they're not as ripe, but that is nigh on perfect. Mmm, vitamin C. I've had protein with mackerel, carbohydrates with the bread, and now vitamins with the fruit. Talk about balanced diet, eh? And a beer. <laughs> so, yeah. That is the dams and plum. You can make jams out of it. Dad's made jams out of them before. Uh, all sorts. You can make all sorts from it. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm going to chase those plums down with some fresh blackberries. Juicy fresh blackberries. Oh, 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 there we go. Mmm. Healthy food, eh? Mmm. So much fruit. My bannock's nearly done, my coffee's definitely nearly done. Purple bannock for the win! Yep, she's a boiling. Ooh. Oh. Just the bannock left. Very easy to burn bannock, people. As you can see, <laughs> she's cooking all right though. Longer term viewers of the channel will know that I keep my coffee in a test tube. This time it's a glass one, it used to be plastic, but got some glass with a little cork. This is instant coffee. I obviously do like proper coffee, grinding the beans down and things like that, but often that's very time consuming. And when I'm out here doing overnighters and things, I have to film as well, so take that into consideration. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. A little bit of coffee. In she goes. Okay, so while the bannock is burning, almost, almost cooked, uh, I just thought I'd run you through this setup and why I've done it. 
So really, this is to try and reduce the amount of bugs that affect me at camp. Will not prevent it. They will always be there. They'll always come, even with uh, human-made, you know, materials and, and lotions and mosquito repellents. They still generally can bite you. So. This is just to help prevent it in a bushcrafty way. What I've done to prevent, prevent myself from the ants on the floor that I spoke about earlier, I've raised my bed up. And as you can see, it's about four foot off the ground. That's gonna really reduce the chance of any ants, spiders, general insects that crawl along the floor. Um, it's usually really effective. Raised beds in general are really effective, but by raising it right up, it just clears me from all those ants because they're everywhere. And what I've got up here is a ridge pole, which I've put together the two tripods to help raise the bed and the ridge pole exactly for this reason, to have a tarp on there. That's gonna protect me from above, from the rain in general, but also it will deter the mosquitoes a little bit because the smoke, as you can see from my fire, is kind of blowing towards my tent a bit. Now, I've got the mosquito repellent stick over there, the cramp ball stick, I'm gonna call it. What I used was a cramp ball fungus, and I just put that, it's burnt out a bit now, because it's hours later, but I used the cramp ball fungus and I put it in there, you generally find it on dead or decomposing ash trees. Um, I think it's called Dordinia concentrica for the Latin name, also known as King Alfred Cakes. Popped a couple of those in there, they're very, they're sort of very, they take an ember very well. So, and they burn for a long time. This has been burning four hours, so it's just burnt out. Um, popped one of those in there, I used the moss to make it smoke more, as you can see previously. And it made it much more smoky, so it was like a smoke lantern, really. And I've done that at both ends of the camp, except I used the stick over there in the fire to keep it going because it's now daytime and I'm going soon. So that was that. Then I had my chopping log and kind of prep log where I prepped all my food and did my sort of chopping and things like that. The fire, if you want to get rid of bugs a bit more and make it smoky, you can put some greener wood on the fire or some damp or rotten wood that will help get more smoke as well to prevent the bugs coming to you. So I'm protected from the ground and the ants and the spiders and things with the raised bed and I'm protected from the sky with the mosquitoes and the sort of general uh, midges and things like that I'm protected from that the cramp ball lantern all using natural materials so well except the tarp obviously certainly cooked on that side Ooh, that's hot not so much cooked at the top I'm gonna let that cool down a bit I think and pack up the tarp. Hmm, the bannock is dumb. I say dumb, it's best it's gonna get. And, despite being purple and black, it's actually all right inside. And the blackberries make it incredible. I usually put raisins in it, but actually, the blackberries are really nice. Mm mm mm. Mm. I always let it cool down before eating bannock, like with any bread. If you eat bread that's sort of too warm when it's been baked, you'll, you tend to get bellyache, it can give you bellyache. Well, it does me anyway, so. You can peel that outer burnt part off if you wish, if you're really pernickety about food. I just eat the lot. Always put the fire out. Digging holes so the water goes down into the ground and just any heat that's down there or embers that are down there will get put out. It's 
correctly. Guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking by if you're still watching. I'm impressed. You have some patience on you. But cheers, seriously, thanks very much for watching the videos. Thanks for all the likes and comments. If you're subscribed, thanks. If you're not, please do. It really helps me out. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this bushcrafty style video. I'll see you soon again in another episode of TA Outdoors. Longest day for new. A cup of sorrow with the early dew. Come you it this morning. Come and tell me.